America's ambassador to the United Nations slammed Russia on Monday for seizing three Ukrainian ships, calling it an outlaw action. During an emergency UN Security Council meeting called by the US, Nikki Haley warned Moscow that it had committed an arrogant and outrageous violation of sovereign Ukrainian territory. But she showed no sign that President Donald Trump is prepared to ratchet up sanctions against Russia. Haley said she spoke with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and President Donald Trump earlier in the day. As President Trump has said many times, the United States would welcome a normal relationship with Russia. But outlaw actions like this one continue to make that impossible, she said. Haley is set to leave her post at the end of the year. Heather Nauert, a State Department spokeswoman who is a former Fox News Channel anchor, is thought to be the front-runner to replace her. In 2014 Russia annexed Crimea, an ethnically Russian region which the US still considers part of the Ukraine. Russia seized three Ukrainian vessels on Sunday when they entered the Sea of Azov from the Black Sea through the Kerch Strait, a narrow body of water that separates Crimea from the Russian mainland. President Trump has maintained sanctions that his predecessor Barack Obama enforced against a list of 11 Ukrainians and Russians as a result of the annexation more than four years ago. They include ousted Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych and a pair of senior advisors to Russian President Vladimir Putin. All 11 saw their assets tied to the American banking system frozen. Haley did not indicate on Monday that the Trump administration is prepared to level new sanctions on Moscow, but she emphasized that the existing pressure would continue. The United States will maintain its Crimea-related sanctions against Russia. Further Russian escalation of this kind will only make matters worse. It will further undermine Russia's standing in the world. It will further sour Russia's relations with the U. S and many other countries, Haley said. The 15 member UN Security Council has met dozens of times about the Russia Ukraine crisis, but its powers have been rendered toothless since Russia is one of the panel's five permanent members, status that comes with the power to veto resolutions. Now Ukraine is preparing to defend itself from a possible invasion, even as Russia accuses Kiev of plotting with its Western allies to provoke a conflict. In Ukraine, where armed forces were on full combat alert, President Petro Poroshenko sought Parliament's approval to impose martial law beginning on Wednesday to strengthen national defenses against possible invasion by Russia. In a televised address, he assured skeptical lawmakers that his decree, which was to be put to a vote later on Monday, would not curb civil liberties or lead to a delay in elections scheduled for next year. With relations still raw after Russia's 2014 annexation of Crimea from Ukraine and its backing for a pro-Moscow insurgency in eastern Ukraine, the crisis risked pushing the two countries into open conflict, and there were early signs it was reigniting Western calls for more sanctions on Moscow. Six women were wounded when the Russian Coast Guard opened fire on and then seized three Ukrainian ships during the unprecedented standoff. The clash has raised fears of a wider military escalation, and both NATO and the UN Security Council are holding emergency meetings to discuss the crisis today. The two neighbors have been locked in a tense tug of war since Russia's 2014 annexation of Crimea. Britain and France castigated Moscow. British Prime Minister Theresa May called it an act of aggression that provides further evidence of Russia's destabilizing behavior in the region. Spain and Germany joined EU calls for Russia to release the Ukrainian sailors and ships seized in the Sunday standoff. 
Earlier, extraordinary footage emerged of the moment a Russian Coast Guard vessel rammed a Ukrainian Navy tugboat under the order squash him. Crew on the Russian ship were told to hold on tight as it plowed into the Ukrainian tug. Russia and Ukraine Key moments in their relationship ties between Russia and Ukraine have been turbulent since the fall of the Soviet Union, but deteriorated sharply after Kiev's 2014 pro-EU revolution. Amid a new peak in tensions over a naval standoff in the Sea of Azov, here is a recap of key moments in their relationship. Limited Soviet independence in December 1991 Ukraine votes in favor of independence from the Soviet Union in a referendum. Russian President Boris Yeltsin accepts the vote and Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus set up a commonwealth of independent states, CIS. But over the next five years, Ukraine seeks ways to escape Russia's guardianship. Perceiving the CIS as an attempt to bring it back under Moscow's control, it turns towards the West and seeks ties with the US led NATO military alliance Anoko for Russia. Friendship Treaty In May 1997, Russia and Ukraine sign a friendship treaty that reconciles them, but without removing a main source of tension, Kiev's ties with NATO. It settles a key disagreement by allowing Russia to retain ownership of the majority of ships in the Black Sea Fleet based in Ukraine's Crimea, while requiring that Moscow pay Kiev rent to use the port of Sevastopol. Moscow however remains Kiev's most important commercial partner, with Ukraine totally dependent on Russian oil and gas. Pro-West Kiev Ukraine's 2004 presidential election is marred by fraud, and the victory of the pro-Russian Viktor Yanukovych provokes unprecedented protests in the peaceful Orange Revolution. It leads the vote to be cancelled, and in December pro-Western opposition leader Viktor Yushchenko is made president. In January 2005 Yushchenko makes his first trip to Russia in a bid for reconciliation. The gas wars in January 2006 Russian gas monopoly Gazprom suspends vital shipments to Ukraine after months of disputes over the price. The cut affects onward deliveries to European countries hit by a cold snap. Russia again in January 2009 halts gas deliveries to Ukraine owing to the non payment of debts, also suspending for two weeks all shipments to Europe via Ukraine. There is another halt of several months in 2014 over outstanding payments from Ukraine, which is resolved after marathon EU broker talks. European uprising in November 2013 Yanukovych, president since 2010, suspends talks on a trade and political pact with the European Union in favor of closer ties with Russia. It sparks weeks of massive protests by pro-European opposition groups demanding the pro-Russian ruler quits. The uprising, centered on Kiev's independence, Maiden Square comes to a head in February 2014, when police fire on protesters. Nearly 90 people are killed, bringing the toll from the three-month uprising to around 100. Yanukovych flees to Russia and an interim government is installed. Russia annexes Crimea pro-Russian demonstrators clash in February 2014 with supporters of the new interim authorities in Simferopol, the capital of the Crimea Peninsula. Russian gunmen seize parliament and government buildings and raise the Russian flag. On March 16, pro-Moscow officials in Crimea hold a referendum on seceding from Ukraine and joining Russia. An overwhelming 97% of Crimeans vote in favor, although the move is deemed illegal by Kiev and Western capitals. Two days later Russian President Vladimir Putin signs a treaty absorbing Crimea into Russia. 
separatist rebellion in April 2014 A pro-Russian rebellion erupts in Ukraine's industrial eastern areas with demonstrators seizing local government buildings Pro-Russian officials in Donetsk and Lugansk declare their regions to be independent Ukraine